Thank you all for coming and uh, attending the, uh, the OWASP chapter meeting uh, tonight. Um, my name is Martijn Baller. I'm uh, 28 years old and I'm an ethical hacker from the city of Groningen in uh, the north of the Netherlands. Uh, in my daily life I work as an ethical hacker and pen tester at Qubit Cybersecurity, uh, also based in Groningen and in Haarlem. And in my free time, I'm a security researcher on HackerOne, uh, CrowdSource, Cynic, and Cyrocopter. Um, yeah, well, while doing this, I also wanted to take, uh, well, there's a lot of programs you can attend to. Uh, I wanted to take note of all the assets I've discovered or may have found through various re re uh, reasons. Um, this is one of the reasons why I built uh, Recompile. This is a, a small little tool. It does everything I basically use to do reconnaissance uh, from a Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, you might think of it as the, the little uh, motherboard uh, thingy that can work as a pie hole or something like that. Um, yeah, I was researching some stuff and I wanted to combine everything. Uh, I was just doing some free time research and deploying every tool I use inside a, um, a batch monstrosity. Um, this eventually led to the recompile because I thought, yeah, why, uh, why can I just use Raspberry Pi for something else and uh, like a big firewall? Um, right, just a few overviews of or an overview of the talk I'm going to give. Uh, another recon tool. Well, we've got tons of them. So why does this make a difference? And I'll try to persuade you to uh, use your Raspberry Pi as well. And then I'll talk a little bit about the inspiration, where I got the uh, idea from. Uh, I'm not going to do a live demo, but I've recorded some demos, uh, because it basically uh, exists of two parts. Uh, it's the install script and the recon script. Uh, the install script is, well, yeah, if you've been working with Linux, you know, if you install a lot of tools, it's not very fun to look at, so I've sped it up like 20 times. So, don't worry. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of, that, of the upcoming features that I want to implement, and as it's open source, you're all welcome to uh, help me out. Uh, and at the end, there's a little Q&A if someone has any questions, I'll try to answer them to the best of my uh, So, another re recon tool. It's not really a tool, but it's more like a small little platform based on the Raspberry Pi, which is mostly run, uh, or they're mostly run a Linux server on it. So I thought, yeah, why can't I use this in the same way as I use my PPS? Um, I wanted something to be able to get home. Uh, yeah, just look at my phone, connect to the Raspberry Pi, and start a scan. Um, this is for the one-time scans. Uh, something that's still a work in progress uh, is the continuous recon. Uh, this is what we're going to do, uh, uh, like with cron jobs. Uh, we can just, uh, there's two parts of the script, and it will be, uh, one will be for the one time scans, and one will be for the, for the cron job of the continuous recon. Um, and well, I wanted to have an overview of the assets and targets I'm working on. Uh, so there's uh, a Docker instance inside the Raspberry Pi that pulls up a complete web application uh, with an API. And then there's something falling from the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, probably because of the... Um, yeah, I wanted to have... Oops. wanted to have an overview of my targets. So I've uh, used uh, a little web application built by Olivier Webb. Uh, he's also a very good security researcher. And he made a, a subdomain uh, database, or dashboard, or whatever you want to call it. And I'll let's show it. Uh, a bit later. So, um, I got some inspiration uh, because I wanted to. Yeah, I like to build things in Bash. Uh, it works. Uh, if it doesn't work, it will just crash and destroy everything. Um, so I really like Bash and I wanted to have all my tools run at the same time. I wanted to do. Uh, the basic idea was to just. Uh, do one command like recon, and then do a domain, and then it will just get all the information like subdomains, fingerprinting, and everything. Um, so that's 
that's one of the things why I wanted to do it, because I just, you know, I needed it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <all right. laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't sit in the French room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we give you a lift? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Just wait, wait. Uh, that does one. Did you want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to continue now. Um, let's see, where did I go? All right. Another one of my inspirations talks by others, other security researchers. Um, this is something I just love to watch in my free time and just go. I've got a really nice rooftop terrace on my, in my home, so I'll just go sit there with the laptop and just watch some talks or whatever. This is something, yeah, I wanted to use or, yeah, what they have discovered. I wanted to combine it in my recon script and then, uh, use their knowledge to my own advantage. Um, and now there's something, there, there's two blog posts. Well, one from Ed Overflow, uh, which is called the Poor Man's Big Bounty Monitoring Setup. Well, I thought it's a Raspberry Pi, it's pretty, it's not very strong or powerful. So, uh, the Poor Man's Big Bounty Monitoring uh, Setup should work just fine. And it did. Uh, and the other one uh, is called, is the one from Ruben. Uh, it's called the More Advanced Recon Optimization number one and two, which is, which are one of the, those two blog posts really helped me out with their research on creating a tool. Um, one of the talks that I would definitely recommend is the Bug Hunter's Methodology. Uh, it's by um, Jason Hattis, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, very good, very good uh, security research and uh, if you're into bug bounties, you should definitely check this out. Uh, this is the blog post from Ad Overflow. Um, you can just he, he, he's made an example. You can use uh, these tools in your cron jobs and just let them run at, at set points that you um, set up yourself. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, blog post from uh, from Ru uh, Ruben uh, zero zero really random. Um, this goes a bit more in depth and has some practical examples of how to use uh, certain tools or uh, in combination with each other. So. Uh, both of those blog posts are really good to check out. Uh, then there's this uh, visual guide to recon by uh, Neomsek. I can't really pronounce his official name. Um, but it's basically like a, a flowchart of how to uh, do your recon. Um, there's also like a, I think an hour long talk uh, on this, so I would definitely check this out as well. Um, then there's another uh, thing, uh, like Justin said, I'm part of the um, uh, crowdsource uh, platform. Um, this also inspired me, they have like a web application scanner that uh, goes in depth on the, um, on the application. And the tool that I've built we compile just goes for everything around it, like subdomains and everything to uh, get your assets like in a big overview and see where you can go in depth. And should you have this tool, you could go on all of those domains or subdomains, you could check out this, uh, with the crowdsource uh, scan. Uh, so this is one of the big inspirations for my, uh, tool. Um, um, yeah. Next thing I'm gonna show you is, uh, the little demo. It's been sped up a little bit. And I'm gonna start with the installation demo. Uh, there were quite some problems and issues because uh, the ARM uh, kernel, um, yeah, it doesn't really like all the Linux uh, dependencies or install or stuff or whatever. Um, so I had to go through everything again and again and again. It's not very uh, fast. So sometimes at the end of the script, it's like, oh, this works and it just dies. 
then I have to go through the script again and check whatever it does. And that's also, if you check out the, the installation script and the recon script, you can see that it's uh, defined in functions. Because in the, in the, in the starter, we just rattle everything in one line and just go and see whatever, whenever it crashes. Uh, that was about a year ago, so some improvements have been made. Um, well, basically you can just uh, log into your uh, Raspberry Pi. You only have to flash the SD card, uh, plug it in, SSH into your machine, uh, do a get clone of the uh, recompile project, uh, CD into the, the project and use your install script. That's basically all I wanted to have done, like a uh, flash card, SSH into it, uh, use the install script. Uh, at this moment, it's uh, doing some pipe things. Uh, I think this is the uh, docker. It's a bit stretched out, but yeah, you can probably see some Ruby things going on here. And at the end, it's done. It, mm -hmm. it was sped up like 20 times, so it, the end was a bit fast. What were the green things? You were typing, uh, <coughs> typing the commands? Yeah. Ah, right, yeah. Um, it's a little thing I have in my term uh, terminal. Uh, it will grab everything and uh, put a green marker on it if it's something like an MD5 hash or an IP edit. Uh, when I'm getting a lot of data in my screen, you want to check something out really fast, this will just do it. I can share it with you if you want to play it. Jobert from Hacker One, he created a little script. So it's pretty useful for me some GitHub as well. Okay. Yep. It's almost done. <coughs> How long does it take to install? Uh, it's about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So it's completely unattended, so you don't have to press anything to the install. On a Pi 3? Sorry? On a Pi Raspberry Pi 3? Yeah. Uh, I'm using the uh, latest one, the 3 Plus. Plus. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's a lot, uh, I didn't think, uh, or I didn't thought it would be a lot faster uh, than the free, but it is. Yeah. Um, so on the other one, it would take like 25, maybe 30 minutes, or just die. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this, this happens. Uh, uh, right. The other thing, this is like, the installer is, is pretty basic. You just use some functions, installs all the uh, requirements for the, for the tool. Um, I would like to invite you to check out the uh, recon.sh uh, script as well later on to see what I'm actually talking about. Uh, it's open source, so you can all just uh, look it up in your phone. Um, basically, what it does is it uh, combines a brute force scan of subdomains with uh, existing tools like uh, Subfinder, uh, AltDNS, or um, uh, Amas from OWASP. Uh, all those tools are installed as well in the in the installer. Um, when the brute force is uh, completed, uh, the other one with the uh, we'll check uh, certificates, uh, DNS, and all the things that subdomains are registered to. Um, at the end, all of those uh, domains will be checked if they're online. Uh, if they're online, they will be put in a separate list that's called like online.txt or something like that. Uh, and from there on, that will be the base of the next uh, couple of functions, which will do fingerprinting, port scanning, and uh, there's an implementation of uh, making screenshots as well, web screenshot.py, but not yet there. Um, so on the first thing is starting to create uh, a word list. Um, uh, I've added some basic word lists. Uh, you could, it will just combine them, sort them on uniqueness, and then just go through everything and check for a 200k. Uh, basically, whatever you brute force it does. Uh, when this is done, uh, um, when this is done, uh, Subfinder will go through the DNS records and through the certificate check. Um, well, this, this is about the Subfinder. Uh, when that's done, uh, all DNS will go through it again with the brute forcing. And after that, the, um, uh, everything will be checked on uh, if it's online, either on uh, port 80 or port 403 uh, for secure connections. Um, 
at this moment, there's a couple of uh, still some bugs in it. Uh, uh, your help is much appreciated for, uh, <laughs> for this. Um, yeah, when when all of the the port scanning is done, uh, uh, it will be combined in a um, sort of uh, combined list of findings. Uh, that will be uh, transported to a or exported to a JSON file, uh, which can be used in a post call uh, to the application running in Docker. Uh, at the end, uh, it will in this story. I could zoom in a little bit. At least uh, the the Docker uh, installation uh, or Docker program is installed in the installer. But it gets booted up the first time when you run the scan for the first time. So uh, that way we make sure that the, the dashboard is running and we can make a post API call uh, with our new data. Um, it will be looking a bit like this. Uh, so I've run two scans on one of our public uh, uh, bug bounty program and uh, website. Um, if you click this, you will get the complete list of all the subdomains and everything. Uh, something that's not yet, yeah, this dashboard is a bit of a uh, long. Uh, it only shows the asset uh, and when it's created. Um, and I wanted to bring in the IP address and bring in the port. But yeah, I'm not really doing a lot of web development these days, so it's a bit of a, yeah, you don't care to help. Um, Yeah. Well, like I said in the last slide, uh, the dashboard really needs some love. Uh, it's not one of my strong for, uh, uh, strong, uh, sections of what I uh, like to do. I like to build scanners and I like to build brute forcing tools and stuff like that. Uh, and so yeah, the, the dashboard can be a bit more detailed. Um, I would also like to uh, implement some options that uh, would define more curated scans um, because I forgot to tell you but there's also um, a Go Busters installed uh, it's like Deer Search but written in Go um, this will look for every uh, for usual endpoints uh, like uh, real comes slash something or something uh, this will uh, be, uh, those results will be put in the dashboard as well you can see how many endpoints you have uh, on what board. Um, and another thing is that there should be some more efficiency and structure in the results directory. Uh, currently, there's uh, a lot of files being put in, uh, like a folder, like uber.com has a lot of files, like subdomains, subdomains, filter, port scans, everything. Um, and I would like to build something that creates a directory for each subdomain and then put in the details and have some more structure in it. Yeah, the, currently it's on version 1.2 uh, or something. Uh, I really wanted to release version 2 today because of the, the presentation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been pretty busy at work, so sadly it's not today. It's gonna be soon. <coughs> See ya. <laughs> There's some room for the questions, if there are any. Uh, I was just curious about the ability to write the code. So I understand that it's all about the process of scanning. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about the methodology to do that. I'm sorry, the methodology to. You have to follow the main to do the process of it. So you say it's basically the assembly. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, the first thing is brute force. Uh, this will just create a big uh, word list and append or uh, yeah, prefix all those words to the domain, and then just go uh, check if they're all up. That's basically it. Uh, the other tool I'm currently using is Subfinder. Uh, it's written in Go, um, and it checks. Uh, through DNS records, uh, and <laughs> it uh, checks and a lot of more stuff that you, uh, as a company, you would register your subdomain, like in a certificate to get SSL or something like that. 
that's what they uh, scrape. So the combination of those two uh, uh, rules, functionalities, is what creates the end list. And that's about the starting point of yeah. the rest of the tool. What's the tool we use to parse the algorithm in a dashboard? Um, yeah, it's basically it's just an, uh, an API call, um, creating uh, the endpoint of, or the end results, like the domains of TXT, uh, will be converted to a JSON file. Uh, this can be used in the post call through the, uh, through the API running on the, on the dashboard. Uh, as soon as I make the call, uh, the main, the domains get inserted and then. Uh, what tool do you use for the port scanning and how big of the SD card do you for how heavy is this? Yeah, um, I've done it on a 16 gigabyte okay. SD card, so basic one, yeah, I would recommend a 32 ish. But it's not, it's not needed to have any bigger than 265 or something like that. Uh, and the other question was about the uh, port, port scanning, scanning, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, using uh, NMAP. Uh, okay. Just the top scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, like the top 10,000. So it's pretty popular. And I'm using, I'm always confused between the two, Amas or Mascan. I think Mas -scan. Mas -scan. Mas -scan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, so those two, basically. Yeah. And there's another tool, uh, the little functionality that checks to be, uh, if everything is online. Uh, because I used to use, uh, go to calls online to check if, uh, certain posts are online. Doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Uh, so there's a little bash functionality I've written in that if, if it's like a uh, port 8 or a port or 3, it will resolve. <laughs> and that's from, that's why we get it results from. Have you done any performance testing about the subdomain that we're forcing? Um, no, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've been, it's, it's scheduled. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's scheduled. So I haven't yeah, done it yet. Uh, with a lot of repo tools, you have to buy APIs, uh, Google API. How is this with this tool? Also? Um, yeah, you can, uh, well, so far that the tool is implemented, um, you can use almost every API that's doing those, those scraping kind of things. Um, but, yeah, there's, <coughs> I'd say, if there's like three paid API tools, and there's like 20 free ones, then I don't know how much would you miss. Oh, that's a problem. You can make it as, as, ex, ex, yeah. as expensive as you would like, but yeah, this is like a poor man's. I don't care about the more than I've We're going for the free APIs here. And if you had to spend $100 on something, which, which one would you pick? Uh, yeah, the showdown. <coughs> showdown, yeah. Yeah. But I'm using the free one, uh, on the free one, and my, Personal research, I use the paid one. Uh, just a small suggestion, you said you are not yet able to implement the screenshot tape. Yeah. I, I think you could just uh, maybe use the uh, eyewitness as part of it. Yeah, yeah, there's some uh, things going on with the, the headless uh, version of it, yeah. or running on an ARM uh, kernel. Uh, it, it works, but not really like the way I wanted to. So. I'm just gonna write some functionality for it that will make it work eventually. Uh, one more question. Uh, maybe there are some uh, other pro tips that are regarding some recon uh, instances that you can propose because basically you mentioned about uh, supplement finder regarding your uh, your buster regarding uh, nmap, so it's basically not nmap like uh, for pages. <laughs> And uh, it's nothing spectacular that you're able to find out of it. So maybe there are some other approaches that you are following. Um, no, it's basically quite uh, like default ish. Uh, ish. So yeah, I would recommend checking out the source code for that because yeah, we go for every part. It's like uh, four hundred lines of bash. Uh, bash doesn't really need a lot of space, so. Guys, quite a lot. So uh, yeah, there's some some special tricks in that I've gathered throughout this years. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks.